Uh, this device here is called a liner handler and uh, you might see it on the back of uh, trucks, this kind of thing. Uh, it's based on um, this sketch here which has been supplied to me. Uh, I've annotated the sketch to identify pivot points uh, in the mechanism uh, and in fact that's how I've managed to uh, model it using Microsoft Excel. Uh, there's a three-stage boom, so there's the main boom uh, which is lifted by a lift ram and then we can extend an intermediate boom and we can also extend a final boom. And to make these movements I've linked up these uh, um, slider bar controls. So to lift the uh, ram I have to just do that or to lower it I just have to do that as well. Now what you can also see is I've got some calculations below that I'm going to just run through uh, in a couple of minutes um, but th this is the calculation summary and in fact the calculation summary is telling me how hard the lift ram is working, how hard the intermediate uh, boom extension rams working so that's the effort it takes to push this further out and then there's another one here for the final extension ram so that's the effort it takes to push the final boom uh, out. And I'm also keeping a check on some stresses as well uh, stresses in the main boom, stresses in the intermediate boom and stresses in the final boom uh, and these are all based upon uh, the, the, the 10 markers across here so these are in fact uh, demand to capacity. So the black line shows you the demand and the capacity is the full 10 lines there. So as we play around with our uh, geometry uh, we can see the calculations uh, making various uh, changes in response to the movement, in, in response to the geometry movement. Uh, I think there's a couple of things that I've noticed that have been quite interesting. Um, obviously uh, the worst case I thought might have been when the thing was most outstretched like this because this is where the moments get um, uh, the moments from from the pivot are highest but in fact the worst case is this position here and this is because of the uh, the geometry of the lift ramp and the perpendicular distance from the pivot position so in fact I'm getting the the uh, maximum demand to capacity when I'm trying to raise a load uh, from this configuration and in fact when we pop it all the way up the perpendicular distance uh, is much improved here so in fact when it's in this configuration there is the demand capacity is uh, surprisingly low. Uh, the other couple of things that I've noticed in terms of the extension rams um, if we fully retract these we can see that the effort it takes to um, uh, extend the, the ram is not very much but as I extend them out you can see that the force required to push it even further gets greater and the same thing happens with the intermediate ram so as I push the uh, thing further and further out the amount of effort it takes to keep pushing it increases and that's because this there's a there's two bearing points at points E and F and the contact force increases as the points E and F get closer together uh, and so the friction load is bigger so this is why we see uh, that when it's fully extended the uh, it takes a lot of effort to extend the ram or, re or retract the ram uh, um, so that's uh, another interesting thing that I've noticed. So. Uh, I'll show you quickly the calculations that lie underneath this. These are all Excel calculations made with uh, uh, the XLC add-in so that I can see all the equations. But there's obviously some fixed coordinates, there's some fixed lengths, there's some cylinder lengths. This is the open and closed center dimensions. Uh, then I have some parameters here. These are in fact, this 100% here, are in fact those, uh, they're tied in with the slider controls that we've seen. So that how, that's how we make the calculation change. And then I have a whole load of geometry calculations here. Uh, I have some mass parameters uh, and I calculate some moments, I calculate some uh, stresses uh, in the boom uh, and then I do some uh, calculations based uh, for the lifting ram, uh, then for the extension cylinders and that's the end of my calculation. But it's all nice and neatly summarized in this little sketch here and it's surprising what you can learn about a machine from having a model like this to play with. It's really quite useful.
Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, and if you want to see some more calculations like this, you just need to visit excelcalcs.com.